Right, so good afternoon, everybody. So I'm guessing that everybody's here in this room because you have been uh, thinking about starting a small business. Um, and I know we all sit in the pub and have great ideas, but the problem with those ideas is it's very difficult to actually make, get them into reality. So what I'm going to be speaking about today is I'm not going to tell you what business you should have or, or, or you know, what kind of thing you should do. I'm just going to tell you how you get it done and how you actually achieve this thing. Um, I've had three small businesses in my time. One's very successful, one's mediumly successful, and one was disastrous. So I chucked the disastrous one pretty quickly. Um, but I've, so I have started a few little businesses, and I probably will do a few more um, in my time. In fact, we're busy starting another one uh, here with Simon over here. Um, so yes, the first thing that we need to speak about when, you, when you're thinking about setting up a business is why are you doing this? You've got to have a good reason why you're going to start a business because... Um, if you don't have a good reason, it's not going to succeed. Um, starting up a business is an incredibly long journey and it's going to suck the lifeblood out of you. It's also going to feed you with lots of energy, but it will suck the lifeblood out of you too. So if you don't have a good enough reason why, don't do it. Wait until you've got the reason. Um, some of the things that motivate people, you might have a vision to how you want to change the world. You might have a new product you want to produce. You might want to, I don't know, save the earth, whatever. Uh, having a vision is, you know, even if you don't have a spectacular vision like saving the planet, just having a vision of something that you want to achieve and have a very clear idea. Um, some people do it because they want more money. Um, as a freelancer or in a salary, there's a limit to how much money you can earn. Um, even if you're on a very good salary, it still has a limit. Um, so making, having a business is one way of potentially earning more money. You might want job satisfaction out of it. I know, you know, when I, the last time I had a proper job, I've only had a few of those in my life. Most of the time I work for myself. But the last time I had a proper job, it, there was a lot of job satisfaction for the first, time, first few years. And then after a while, it just got really, do I really have to turn up every day to the same place again? So I quit. Um, some people do it for fame and glory, particularly the, the artists with which we work. Their, their choice of setting up their business as a band is obviously for part motivated by fame and glory. And this is something that only occurred to me in the last year or so. Um, one of the reasons you set up a business is so that you've got something that you can sell. It's like buying a house. It's an investment. If you can invest a whole bunch of time into this thing that's become successful, if you can eventually sell that business, you usually sell it for quite a lot more than you think it's worth. It's very interesting. When I started investigating, you know, what is my business worth? It was a hell of a lot more than I suspected. Um, so, yes, having something to sell in the future is, is a very good reason for, for starting a business. Then, what are you going to do? What are you, so, first of all, it has to be a clear idea. You need to know what you're going to do and have it focused in your mind. Um, I am going to do business X. And then that is your clear idea and that's what you can always focus back on. When you start getting sidetracked into business why, you can actually come back and go, actually, no, I do this. I don't do that. I do this. And you can bring yourself back to what it is. So your clarity of vision, as always, with everything you do in life, having a clear, clear picture is uh, a good idea. Um, do some market research. You know, do you want, really want to start another PA company? Um, you know, is there a space for you in the market? Are you going to try and compete with the big boys or are you going to take on the school's market or are you going to try and find a different focus? But do some market research just to establish how many other people are doing what you're doing and how, how heavily you're going to have to compete with people in order to make um, inroads. Also, do some research into whether there's any legislation that covers your, your line of work. You know, number one, do you need to look at employment law? Do you need to look at... Um, obviously health and safety and everything. You know, look at the legislation that controls your, your, um, the area that you want to work in and just make sure that you're compliant. Um, set up costs, obviously, are something that you really need to consider. Um, how much is it actually going to cost you? And when you do your calculations for how much is this going to cost me, add another 20% minimum because there's going to be a whole lot of stuff that you didn't think about. You know, just copywriting your name costs a fortune. Um, you know, there's so many things that you wouldn't really think about as, oh, um, you know, in order to start my business, I need a van, a PA, uh, uh, you know, I need to employ a person, blah, blah, blah. What you haven't thought about is the fact that you need to spend five, 500 pounds to um, copyright your logo. So there's lots of little things that you will not have thought about that are going to come into it. So when you're looking at your setup costs, be very realistic and then be super realistic and then be extra. And that's going to be your setup costs. Um, 
ongoing costs. Almost no business in the known universe, with a few exceptions, almost nobody opens their doors for business on day one and is already making money. Most businesses take a while to generate money and the thing is to be able to survive long enough to sustain those costs uh, before you actually start bringing in a profit. So, for example, you know, if you are in a job at the moment and you're starting a small business, it might be an idea to keep that job for a little bit longer so that you know that you can at least get your rent paid, cover your mortgage, feed your kids um, without having to rely on the new business. It means you're going to be working 15 times as hard. But hey, if you're a sound engineer and you're in this room, you're probably not afraid of hard work anyway. So the ongoing costs, it's going to take a while before anything actually generates money. So be prepared that you're going to have to do the sustain that. So once you've started, let's say you have a little PA company, you're going to have to pay your storage. You're going to have to pay your payments on your van. You're going to have to pay the security company for that. Those are costs that are, that are never going to go away. So make sure you can cover those um, before you step away from something that's a job, for example, that's bringing in income. Um, when I did start Soul Sound, I did actually stick around in my job for another year and a half until A, I got really sick of the job and went, can I live off this money? Yes, I can. I'm out of here. So do make sure that you've actually got the ability to live while you're starting up your business. Sounds, you know, obvious thing. Do what you know. Um, if you're a sound guy, probably starting up a lighting company is not the best idea unless you want to be paying, you know, paying out money to a lighting guy to, you know, tell you what lights are. Um, so stick with what you know. There's, if you want to try something new, if you want to try pyrotechnics, if you want to try something else, then go and work as a freelancer for a pyrotechnics company. Don't start your own business in pyrotechnics unless you've got you know, the manpower of people who do know about pyrotechnics to do it. So do what you know and do what you're good at. Um, you know, it sounds simple, but yes, pick, pick something that you're very good at and make that into a business. I happen to be quite good at talking, so I've made a business out of talking. Um, now, this is the most interesting part for me, I mean, is, is how you actually now are going to get it done. These are all things that you can read online and any way you like. Any business book you read will tell you all this stuff. How you actually go about doing it is the more difficult thing. Um, my mother is a very wise woman. And when I left high school and was on my way to university, she gave me this little mouse. And that was in, dare I say it, 1987. She gave me that mouse, and I still have it. It still sits on my desk. And the story that she gave me about the mouse was when things become very overwhelming, when you've got a huge amount of work to get through, a huge number of stuff that needs doing, just imagine the little mouse in the corner of a room that's filled with cheese. And of course, the mouse can't eat all the cheese at once, um, but the only way the mouse can eat through all the cheese is to start in one corner and slowly but surely eat a little bit of cheese at a time, and eventually the mouse will eat all the cheese. And that was really quite, it sort of moved me quite a lot and I've never forgotten that and that's why I keep the mouse there because you do get overwhelmed and one of the problems with starting a business is that chances are you quite likely to be on your own or just you and a partner. Um, but most, many small businesses are really, you know, one man bands. Um, just being overwhelmed by the amount of stuff that you've got to do can just be really create such a lot of inertia that you actually do nothing and then you end up not starting your business. So having the mouse analogy, I can't give you mice, but I can give you bugs. Um, you've all got bugs on your seats. Uh, take your bug home and let the bug sit there and, and imagine a room full of whatever bugs eat. Um, and just imagine every time you get totally overwhelmed and you just think, I can't do this, I can't do this, just start doing one small thing. It's incredible how you know, some people, that have, this works with the exercise as well. If you, if you never go jogging, don't, don't say to yourself, I'm going to go jogging in the morning. Say to yourself, I'm just going to put on my jogging clothes in the morning. And you know what? Once you've got your jogging clothes on, the chance are you actually will get out the door and go and do it. So it's just one of those little things. Just do one small thing in the right direction and everything else just follows. So just take that first step and don't be scared of that first step. Just actually go, what's the first thing I'm going to do? And if it's as simple as I'm going to look for a website that looks that I like, that I can model my own website on, anything. Just take one tiny little step and it just leads you on to further things. Okay, I was, I was in two minds about whether I should put this in, this talk. Um, everybody know what a vision board is? Right, a vision board is something that you make that um, 
cut, basically it's cutting out pictures of things that make you feel good or things that remind you of your business or things that make you want to go further and sticking on an A3 piece of paper and that becomes your vision board. It's a bit naff and it's a bit rolling eyes and I did a little business course where the, the first thing we did on this business course was make a vision board and I sat there in the corner going, I am paying for this and now I am cutting out pictures. But I was surprised at the result of it. In the end, it's a quite personal time, I'm quite shy about putting this up, but anyway. In the end, this was my vision board. I wanted to get back out on the road. I was sick of being stuck in a college. Um, the picture of the lion, I just wanted the, that just makes me feel free. So I just wanted that picture on there because that made me feel free and, get, and, and, and away from my, my, my job. Um, the reason Virgin Galactic is in the middle is because that's actually one of my main motivations. I'm not motivated by money in particular, but I'm very motivated by getting my ass up into space. So having Virgin Galactic in the middle of my vision board is the thing that lets me focus and go, that's my ultimate goal. I don't necessarily even want to buy a house. I don't care. I'm really not motivated by money, but I am motivated by experience. And I want to get my exper uh, the, the experience that's, I think, in my lifetime, that's going to be the closest I'm ever going to get possible to be in space. So that is one of my major um, motivations. So you can see that there's absolutely nothing about audio in any of the pictures I chose because it was really things that just made me feel good that gave me the feeling of escape from a, a, a nine to five job and things that would just make me feel happy. Um, the thing with the rhino, because I have the agency, you know, I've been nurturing youngsters and blah, blah, blah. So yeah, sorry, I'm, I'm still very shy, so I'm just gonna put it away now. Um, Right, so you've done your vision board, and this is the thing that's going to inspire you as well. Every time you get, oh, God, do I really want to do this? Look at your vision board, and your vision board's going to go, yes, I do want to do this. Um, you definitely are going to need a business model. Um, the business model is really how you are going to make your money. Where does your money come from? You're going to get money in, you're going to be paying money out. Where, which part of that is your profit? and exactly how are you going to make money. I made the mistake when I started of not having a clear business model. Um, and initially, the, I was charging far too little, um, especially because I was just trying to supplement a salary at first rather than be independently in business. Um, and it was very difficult then to start charging more. Once you've already started charging this price, it's very difficult to put your price up here. Starting with your price here and bringing it down, very easy. But putting your prices up is not easy. So I didn't have a clear business model, and, it, and I really suffered for it. And I still have some people working with me in, in the agency who are on the original um, percentage figures because I, how can I change it? You know, you can't take, start taking more money from people. Um, again, clarity of vision. It, it, work out how you're going to do it. And look around at other businesses that are doing something similar to you. And even if it's in a different field, you know, say, you know, you, you're business is in sound and this business happens to be in, I don't know, medicine. Um, but if there's a model that can work, that you can copy, most good things in life are copied. Do not be afraid of copying certain aspects of things. Look what's successful and emulate it. However, you're always going to need something unique as well. When I say copy other businesses, I don't mean copy them word for word doing exactly what they do. I mean copy their business model and then do your own thing within that business model. Business plans, uh, you are gonna need one of these. They're absolute hell to write. I hate writing a business plan. Um, it's, I find it very, very difficult and very annoying, but a good business plan is a thing that actually crystallizes all your ideas and puts it in a situation where you can, you've actually now written it down. It's incredible, the power of writing things down gives you immense power over what you're doing. Um, you can write business plans from scratch. There's no particular method of writing a business plan. But one thing you do need to do is, um, or what you can do, sorry, you don't have to do this at all, but it's useful to use a template. Because if you can just Google, um, you know, business plan template, you'll get thousands. Try and find a template that's in a similar business to yours or a similar business model to yours, and then adapt it. Because all business plans come with headings. And there's going to be a lot of things that you haven't thought about that you might need to put in a business plan. Um, and that using it somebody else's template will help you find those ideas and, and get those headings that you can just fill in the details underneath. You need to have one because it's, also, it's for yourself to refer to. It's a plan. It's what you stick to and you, you um, work according to this plan. 
but it's also for other people. And when I say it's for other people, um, it's for people who want to see your mon who want to see your figures. So if you're trying to borrow money, in particular, anybody you borrow money from, even if it's your uncle, they're going to want to see your business plan because they want to see that their money. So banks, funding bodies, grant applications, anything you do, people want to see um, your business plan, and they also definitely want to have a look at your figures. Now, when you're in your first business, it's very hard to predict your figures, but try. You know, you've got to think about it. So if I make, you know, £2,000 in January, um, well, am I going to make £2,000 in January? Because January is a really quiet month in the audio industry. Perhaps I should look at making no money in January and, and building up. For February, I might make a bit more, and March more again, and then by April, things settle in and, you, and the year gets to a start. So when you're looking at your figures, you've really also got to consider your own business environment. So if you're in the live events industry, you know, January's a dead month. Don't expect to earn any money in January. Go on holiday. I find that's the best thing to do with a January is just get the hell out. Um, it's also something you can refer back to later. So, you know, three years' time, you can go back to your business plan and go, oh, well, that's interesting. I did actually achieve that, or I didn't achieve that, or go, what was I trying to achieve? Because I've kind of forgotten. Um, so it goes, it's good, something that's good to go back to. And of course, a business plan changes. It doesn't have to stay the same, but it just gives you guidance all the time of where you should be going, um, you know, where, 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 what you were aiming at in the first place. Especially if you had a vision to, I don't know, save the world. It's good to go back and see, oh, how was I going to save the world? Oh, yes, maybe I should go and do that. Um, and I said, yes, any kind of funding application will need it. Um, Get advice, right? Everybody and their auntie um, has a business. Take a lot of advice. Talk to everybody. Talk to your mates. Talk to your parents. Talk to your family. Talk to people you meet at Plaza. Talk to people you meet on a job. Talk to everybody about it and take a lot of advice. And then throw most of it away. But take the advice. Ask people. See what their input is because... It makes you think, and it makes you think about things in a different way to what you've been thinking about it up till now. So just because somebody advises you to do something doesn't mean you actually have to follow that advice, uh, but it makes you think. So take a lot of advice, but don't feel like you have to actually follow all of it. Um, the value of a good accountant is beyond belief. It's, if it's the one professional that you have on your paid professional, you know, maybe a lawyer, you don't really need a lawyer maybe, but you definitely need a good accountant. Um, and by good accountants, I mean somebody who actually gives a shit about you and your business. Um, I've had three accountants so far. The first one I'd never even met in person, uh, gave me no advice ever, just did my tax and I'm quite sure I paid way, too, way more tax than I should have. Second time, I thought, okay, well, I'll go to a music business accountant I uh, went and had a chat with this, with this woman, and she seemed fantastic. Did the accounts for 50 cent, I believe. So I thought, okay, they're cool. She's in the music industry, absolutely fantastic. But remember that she's dealing with 50 cent accounts. He's earning millions. You know, I had my little small business, which was turned, you know, maybe bringing in 30,000 pounds a year profit at the time. She had no interest in my business whatsoever. She just got, you know, her 1,000 pounds for doing my books, and that was that. In fact, she actually gave me some really bad advice at some point. Now, that's the reason I had to open a third business quickly so I could deal with the VAT on that, and then I had to close it again because it wasn't very good. But, so, you know, having poor advice from your accountants, really, I wanted to sue her but didn't have the money. Um, so eventually I found a great accountant, and he has been absolutely invaluable. Um, I can phone him up and say, what do I do now? And he can advise me on how to deal with relationships between my businesses. He can do help me with... Um, you know, paying as little tax as possible. Um, obviously, you do pay some in the end, but, you know, he's just... And he understands and he knows and he understands what my business is about and he wants my business to succeed. So having a good accountant is, has made such a difference to my life. Um, look around for mentor schemes. The government actually has... I don't know if it's still running, but I'm part of a scheme called Growth Accelerator um, that was giving match funding for a training in business. It's all, it was all about getting business training to help small businesses grow. Uh, got match funding for that, and I managed to get a full grant to have a mentor. My mentor's job was done in March, I think was the end, the last thing that he was obliged to do. He's still with me, and I still don't pay him because he likes me and he likes my business, so he still helps me. 
Um, so find yourself a mentor if you go through a government scheme or you just find somebody in your life who can help you men mentor your way through things. Absolutely invaluable. In fact, get two. You know, mentors are great. And it's just somebody when you can go to somebody and say, my God, I'm, I don't know where to go now. I don't know which way to turn. This didn't work. That didn't work. And then somebody who's got more experience than you in the business world can then you know, give some advice. Again, you don't have to take it, but it helps you think. Uh, do courses. Um, I highly recommend um, looking out for, you know, sort of three-day three, three day business courses or a course that lasts 10 weeks, one day a week, something like that. It's unbelievably useful to go and do a little business course. They're not terribly expensive. Um, you may be able to find some free stuff at your local college or um, probably not your college, but, you know, look out, look for courses. It's really, really helpful. If you've got, not got any business background whatsoever, it's really useful to go and do something like that. Right, so I want to rattle through that because this is the bit I want to talk about. Getting things done. Everybody has ideas, but the people who succeed are those who actually go and do them. So, how do you get things done? Do you have an endless to-do list where the bottom, you start crossing things off at the top and the bottom just goes longer and longer and longer? You, you shake... Is that a yes or a no? You don't. Lucky you. All right, what, mo what mo most people do, and many people do, is you start with a pa piece of paper next to your desk, and you go, oh, I've got to do this, this, and this. And then you think, oh, I've got to do this as well. And you just start adding more and more and more and more things to your list. And occasionally you cross something off. But your entire huge to-do list, you never actually get it done. And it becomes completely overwhelming, and you end up doing nothing because your list is just too long. So... Um, I, one of the courses I did was with an amazing lady called Wendy Kerr, and she taught me how to do post-it note planning. The post-it note not only is the best piece of stationery ever uh, created, but it's an incredibly useful tool. So, first of all, clear a wall in your study or your bedroom or wherever you've got your desk. Take all your Iron Maiden posters off and clear it. You need a bright, open, clear wall. Um, I often use this stuff. It's called Magic Whiteboard, because um, I find a single whiteboard is too small. Uh, so I'm, I, I paper my walls. It's, it's run, it works with static, so it sticks to the wall. Um, and, and I cover my entire wall with it, and I get a massive whiteboard. Um, it can be a bit frustrating, because the static doesn't last that long, so I just stick it back up with um, spray mount. But it just turns into giant post-it notes. Um, and what I'm going to do now is I've now rearranged my whole study again. Rearrange furniture. It's very good to rearrange furniture sometimes. Because um, it just, again, sh you know, shakes up the energies a bit. So I've cleared a massive wall, the big wall. I've moved the bookshelf that was there out into the lounge. So I've got this huge wall. And I'm going to get some polycarbonate or perspex or something and cover the entire wall in polycarbonate so that I can have something that I can write on all the time. Because it's all very well, making little notes. And going, mm, or on your iPad, mm, nice little notes. But you don't see them all the time. You only see them if you choose to look at them. So if you have everything on your walls and position your desk so that you can actually survey your empire, you can have everything that you need to do to A, remind you to do things, to make you feel good that you've done stuff, to inspire you to do stuff. Have everything so you can see it. And, uh, and you know, I'm looking forward to getting my Perspex wall up so that I can just scribble everywhere and have everything all the time and I don't have to worry about these things falling down. Um, so the first thing you're going to do is you're going to say, okay, I need to do the following things in order to get my business going. So in this example, you can see I've just made up some stuff that you might need to do. Um, on the big post-it notes, you've got, um, I need to register my company. Um, I need to create a website. I need to find an accountant, find storage if you've got stuff, if your business involves things. Um, I need to do a video for the website, and I need to trademark and copyright. Now, these are just a couple of things, a very few thing, examples. Then on the little post-it notes, take those big post-it notes and subdivide each task into small steps. So, for example, I'm going to think about um, the websites. In order to achieve my websites, I'm going to need to find a web developer. Um, I need to look around and find designs that I like so that I can show my web developer these are... Uh, websites that I like the look of and I like the way they work, so he's got something to work from. Uh, you've got to figure out how you're going to handle your money. If people are paying you for things online, how are you going to do it? There's incredibly strict rules 
um, about how you process people's credit cards, et cetera, et cetera. And trust me, you really want to outsource that to a reputable company to deal with it and pay for that because actually doing all the data protection yourself is virtually impossible um, and could you get you into a lot of trouble. So you need to figure out how you're going to handle taking money if, you, if that's what you do with your website. You clearly you're going to need a logo. So you're going to need to find someone to develop that. Obviously, website needs photos, it needs videos, and words. Uh, one of the things I didn't realize when I started a website was how many words are on a website, and somebody has to write them. All right, so I happen to write all my own words, but um, if you're not good at writing, uh, you're, you're going to need to outsource that to a wordsmith of some kind. Um, so now I've subdivided those tasks, and, I've, and video, as you can see, has got a little star on it, because video, getting a video for your website, is a whole task in itself that then gets subdivided again into different opportunities or different things you need to do. So first of all, why are you having a video? What is it that you need to say in your video? Again, words. Um, find a production company who's going to do it or decide whether you're going to shoot it yourself. If you can, shoot it yourself. Or you, you know, do you have the equipment? Um, so all of those can again be subdivided into smaller and smaller and smaller tasks. Then what you do is you take all your subdivided tasks and you put them in a diary. So what you can do is um, get, print out some calendars, stick it on the wall where you can see it as you sit at your desk. Don't hide this away on a calendar on your phone. Put this on the wall. Um, and so the logo, well, similar designs I'm going to do on, so I can't even read the dates, but anyway. I've given a, a day to each of those things, and that's the date by when I'm, I need to have achieved that particular task. It's so motivating to have a deadline. If you do not have a deadline, chances are you're never going to do it. Put yourself under pressure and give yourself a deadline by which you need to do something because if you don't, you won't do it. So stick everything onto um, a calendar. You can then diarize it as well in your phone, but have something that's really visible or whatever way you choose to do it. But I find this having a visible thing very, very useful. Um, and that way you actually get things done. So in October and November, you'll actually have possibly got your whole website done, except for the things that may, you may not have thought of yet, in which you then start a new task and re-diarize those things. Um, and then, when you complete your tasks, have a nice complete note part of the wall so you can take your post-it note when it's done and slap it on the complete bit so you can see, see what you've done. It's, it can be very soul-destroying, and it can be extremely lonely starting a business. So sometimes you need to you know, pat yourself on the back and go, oh, yeah, I'm doing all right. So having all your completed stuff in one place, stick it all there so you can see what you've done and feel like you've actually achieved something, because often you feel like you're achieving nothing. But if you've got a little list of stuff you've done, you can feel good. Um, also, what's good about doing it this way, don't throw them away. Um, what's good about doing it this way is that... Um, you can also then go, oh, God, did I actually call the web developer or whatever your task was? And you go, oh, yes, I have done it because it's on the complete bit. I often forget what I've done, especially two months later. You go, oh, God, did I do that? I can't remember when actually you have done it. So I love having a complete wall. It makes me feel really good to snap a new post-it note every time I finish something. You bang it on and go, yes. Um, time management is, is crucial to all of this, especially if you're trying to hold down a job or you're still freelancing while you're trying to set up your business. Controlling your time is extremely um, important. This is one particular book on time management um, called Do It Tomorrow by a chap called Mark Foster. Um, he's got some very, very good te techniques for, for time management, which is particularly trying to end endless to-do lists. So if you've got something new on your to-do list, don't put it on today's list, put it on tomorrow's list or the next day's list or whenever you need to get it done by. Don't put everything on today's list because you're never going to get it done. It's very demoralizing. Put it on a list for a day that you know it has to be done. If it needs to be done today, obviously do it today. But if it can be done next week, do it next week so that you can get today's shit done today. Uh, so that's actually a very useful book. He's just written a third one. I, there's one before this, and he's just, I think, revised this into a third book. I'm quite interested to see what he's done next. But I've, I found this is extremely good time management. Um, and it just allows you to finish a day's work in a day. Uh, because if you, if you don't, it can be quite... Um, you just don't feel like you're getting anywhere. 
If you can do this, uh, one of the nice things to do is answer your emails at 10 o'clock in the morning, switch them off, answer them at 3 o'clock in the afternoon. I can't do that in my business because I need to respond instantly to people. But if you've got a business that doesn't really require instant response, uh, a good thing to do is do emails twice a day. And then while you're doing your emails, don't do anything else. Just don't answer your phone during that time. Let the phone ring and answer those calls later. So you get your email done in batches. Not only does it, um, and then you can put an out of office uh, message on that says, look, I'll answer my emails at 10 and 3 in the afternoon. If it's too urgent, give me a ring. But most people are fine with it. As long as they know that you're going to respond, people get nervous when you don't respond. We're all so bloody obsessed with email. that If you don't get an instant response, you think they're not, they haven't got it or you worry. So if you've got an out-of-office message on saying, I will be answering my emails at 10, 10 a.m. and 3 p.m., people go, oh, okay, right, he'll call me, he'll get back to me at 3 o'clock in the afternoon. Then they can forget about it because they know you're going to get back to them and they can carry on with their day without worrying, did they receive it? Have, you know, why haven't they got back to me? So that way you're also helping your clients have a more efficient day um, because they don't have to worry all the time and they don't have to keep checking their emails in case you've responded. They'll know they're going to respond later. Um, also with emails, it's a very good idea to put all the information you need, you, into one email so you don't have to have 10 emails about the same subject. <laughs> I get a lot of emails saying, oh, have you got a sound guy for you know, tomorrow morning? And I go, well, yeah, what do you need them to do? Where do they need to be? What time is it? How much money are we paying them? Just put all that information in the first email so that when I get, I then approach the engineer that I want to put in the job, that engineer, I can give them all the information because that's all he's going to ask me. He's going to say, what time, how much money, where is it, et cetera, et cetera. So you can minimize back and forth emails so easily by just thinking about what information you want to get out of the person you're sending this email to and they'll then give you all the information you need, and you've done one email interaction instead of 20. Sorry, for me. <laughs> it's also a good idea to schedule all your meetings. If you have one day of the week, try and go, Wednesdays is my meeting day. That way you can spend Wednesday wandering around town, going from meeting to meeting to meeting, which takes up a whole day, yes. But if, you've got five, if you can do five meetings on one day, that's nice and efficient. If you've got to do one meeting a day, you're actually taking up, by the time you've done the travel and all of that in between, you're going to end up having five half days being used up by meetings when it could have just been one day. And that'll free up your time to go and do other things like earn money. Um, as I said, I said this before, but be, be realistic with yourself about what you can achieve. If you set your targets too high, you're going to become very demoralized and feel like a failure. Make sure that you, what you think you need to get through in a day is actually achievable, and then you, can be, then you can be happy with yourself that you've done. So don't set yourself too many tasks for one day. Um, similarly to the sticking the, the post-it notes on the wall, um, when you complete, keep a diary of your progress so that you can feel good, because every time you feel bad and you go, oh my God, life is hell, I'm never going to get this business off the ground, I'm so shit, blah, 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 because you'll have those moments, trust me. Um, you can go and look at a little diary. Um, I, when I was starting um, the website out, I used to keep a little diary next to my bed, actually. And before I went to sleep at night, I'd just write down three things that I'd managed to do that day that was a success. And you can always find those three things. And it's absolutely amazing when you're feeling down um, and you're feeling that you, you're really struggling, you can go back to that diary and say, all right, no, I'm all right. I can do things. I can do things. I'm getting there. Um, things that you're not good at yourself, outsourcing. Don't struggle for months and months and months to make your own website if you don't really have a clear idea of, of design and you're not very good at making pretty things, get someone else to do it. Um, it'll save you, you might spend money on getting somebody else to do your website or whatever it is, but that time that you save, you can be spent doing on a lot of other things because let's say, for instance, a very simple website, you should be able to get done for 800 pounds or a grand for a simple one or two page website. If that's going to take you three weeks to do yourself, that's a lot more money than a thousand pounds is worth. Your time, your three weeks of time is worth a lot more than a thousand pounds. So spend the thousand pounds on the outsourcing it to somebody else and spend your time doing the stuff that you're good at so that you can achieve. And then you've got two people working on a project at the same time. So you're actually doubling up how quickly you get it done. Um, one of the great places to look for outsourcing, if you don't know anybody, um, 
people per hour is quite good. Um, Elance is another one. Basically, it's people who advertise their skills online for um, X amount of money. So you can go and choose, I need, I need a graphic designer. You can choose from about 1,000 graphic designers. And that graphic designer can be anywhere in the world. Um, so you can actually, you know, you can really pick and choose. You can see examples of their work. You can um, find people like that through websites like people are. And frankly, they're very cheap because people compete, compete to be fairly cheap. Um, you know, I, I have a, a little graphic that I use um, for my advertising rates and that there's no way I could have done an infographic myself. I, you know, and it cost me, I don't know, 45 pounds or something, which is something that would have taken me three weeks. So definitely look, look at outsourcing. Find, find other people who can do stuff for you. Um, support, you, you're going to need some ongoing support. It's very long and lonely journey to start a business. So um, look out for people who can support you. I highly recommend finding a mentor, even if it's a family member or, or something like that. Just somebody who's not directly involved with your business that who can support you and understand what you're going through. Um, warn your friends that you're going to talk about nothing else for the next foreseeable future and you're going to be very boring, but can they please just put up with you and tolerate the fact that they're actually not going to, you know, you're not going to talk about movies with them for the next year. You're going to talk to them about your business and the problems that you're having. So prepare your friends uh, so that they know that you're actually going to need support. One of the most valuable things um, is an accountability group. Now, this lovely woman, Wendy Kerr, who I did a, a little course with, she introduced me to the idea of the accountability group. What it is, is if, if you find other people who are also starting a business, which you would normally find if you did a little business course, you would often find these other people. Their businesses will be completely different to yours, but they're also in the same sort of position of starting out. And what you do is you meet once a month, either in person or on Skype, and you actually, you know, give yourself, give each person 10 minutes to go, well, this is where I'm at, this is this, uh, the things that I'm struggling with, I've got a problem with this idea, of, uh, my marketing isn't working, what can I do? And so each person in the group gets a bit of time to talk about their issues and their problems. Um, and then you set, you, start, you kind of commit. So... I've got, let's say you're talking about marketing, you will commit to each other to, by the time we meet next month, I will have done this, this, and this. Don't give yourself a lot to commit to, but commit to something to each other so that they, uh, so when you, because what's going to happen is when your, meet, your next meeting comes up and you go, oh my God, I haven't done it, you will suddenly go and do it. Because it's embarrassing to go back to your meeting and say, oh, yeah, no, sorry, I didn't do it. So it gives you, an, it makes you accountable for your, what you're going to do next. Um, I found it absolutely, absolutely invaluable to do this. And I, we, we did one which was organized by Wendy. But I've also now started another one. I don't know if you know, it's Nathan Lively from Sound Design Live um, and soundgirls.org. We've got a little accountability meeting between us because we're all in a similar area. We've all got stuff that we're trying to achieve that's quite um, the same. or well, not the same, but similar. And we can find ways not only to be accountable to each other, in terms of getting things done, but also we can find lots of ways to be very helpful to each other um, and cross-pollinate and cross-market. And so you, you, need, you need friends. And one of the things that the accountability group does is it gives you buddies who are on your side and who will help you. So if they see, oh, you've got a problem with uh, one particular area, they might know somebody who can help you. Or you might know somebody who can help them. Or you might be able to help each other directly. So. That's a really, really nice thing to do, and I think it would probably be nicer to do it in person. I've only ever done it on Skype. So if you've got some people who are all in the same area, it's, I think it's a really nice thing to do to meet up in person. But it's also more difficult to get people to commit to meeting up in person because that involves travel and time and blah, blah. So an hour on Skype is quite easy to commit to. Um, it's not always that easy to get people in the same room. And also, of course, on Skype, you can be in different countries. It doesn't matter. Um, read books. More, just read everything. Um, I started reading, uh, my first sort of business book I started reading was Richard Branson. I mean, I, I don't actually like the man particularly. I, I admire him tremendously. Not sure I like him very much. Uh, wouldn't really want to have him around for dinner, but his books are incredible because they're so inspirational because he did everything 
from nothing. He just went and did it. He actually put one foot in front of the other and he started himself some businesses, some very, very, very successful businesses, as we all know. So um, read books. This is a very interesting book, um, which I've owned for a year and have yet to read. But I'm going to read it. This is my next book. Um, it's called Business Model Generation. And it's got a whole lot of ways to come up with your business model. So if you don't have a business model yet, this will help you actually generate and create your business model with a step-by-step -step process. And there are hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of other books, useful things. I like to read um, inspirational stuff, so things that will get me out of bed in the morning. Um, I, like, I like to read about, you know, how to lose my, inhib not inhibitions that way, but, you know, lose my, those mental inhibitions where you feel, oh, I can't do something and how to overcome those things. There's loads of books on the market, I suppose. They technically qualify as self-help, but those are, they're really great books to read and they do really help, especially if you can get ones which are related to business and how to take next steps. There's also a lot of rubbish out there. I mean, I've bought hundreds of these books and, and I, some of them I read the first chapter and I take them to the charity shop because I don't actually agree or like it. Um, but I do find myself, every time I'm stuck at St Pancras waiting for a train, I'm in WH Smith buying another business book because I find them very inspiring to continually read these things um, it's when I stop reading them and suddenly just go back to reading novels only because I'm an avid reader. I've got to read something all the time. Um, but when I go back to just reading novels, I lose, my, I lose a lot of momentum and I lose a lot of inspiration. So I also highly recommend, highly recommend, if you can do this, um, the morning bath. If you don't have to be in a hurry to get out the door in the mornings, if you're freelance and you only start walk, walk, work in the afternoon, Get up in time to have an hour in the bath with a book. Not only do you have the glories of a hot soak, but you also have time to really, really sit and read a book that's actually going to inspire you for the day. Because everything you read, even if you only read a chapter, get, you get up out of the bath and you go, okay, right, I'm ready for the day. And then you're also already clean and you know, you've had a nice soak. So it's a nice way of doing things. Um, if you're a showerer rather than a bather, uh, find some time. But reading a, something inspirational in the morning is actually quite, quite effective. Um, there's one other little thing uh, that I do, which I'm so... See, a lot of this I'm actually quite embarrassed to admit. Um, has anybody seen the TED talk by Amy Cuddy about power posing? Go to the TED website and watch um, this video on power posing. It's excruciatingly embarrassing to demonstrate this, uh, but I will. <laughs> Basically, every time I go into an important meeting, before I go into the meeting, I duck to the loo, to the ladies, and I do what's, what a power pose, which is, could be that, it could be that. Um, but basically, striking a powerful pose has a real effect on the hormones in your body and the way you respond to things. So just by standing up straighter, putting your hand, like just standing like that. Sometimes if I don't have the opportunity, I'll just walk down the street a little bit, just looking a bit naff uh, with my hand, because it does something to the inside of you when you stand like that. You know, if you go, also, if you're going to a business meeting all sort of curled up, you know, you're never going to get the deal. You need to stand up and be accounted and look confident and be confident. And if you can spend, you need to do it for about a minute. If you could find somewhere to go and be all private and, you know, stand like that for a minute. Sometimes I do Hussein Bolt. Um, if you can find a place to do that, it's incredible at how, how differently your business meeting goes after that. Because it's something to do, if, if you watch the talk, there is a real scientific reason why this works. It changes the way your, horm your hormonal balance or something to do with your hormones. Um, and that has an effect, A, on you, but it also has an effect on the way other people respond to you. Um, so, yes, I highly recommend that. And again, I'm totally ashamed that to have done a power pose in front of you. But yes, it's fun. Do it. Obviously, there's lots of online courses. Udemy, there's loads and loads and loads of courses. In fact, Udemy is brilliant. Uh, because you can have lots of, um, you can also do marketing courses and YouTube courses and all of these. And if you just wait for the discounts, you get them for £10 each, so, um, or £20 each, depending on the, the promotion. But there's tons and tons and tons of courses, specifically on marketing and specifically online presence. Do those courses. Looking and feeling the part of a business person is different to looking and feeling the part of a, of a, um, a freelancer. You need to, first of all, get dressed in the mornings. It's so easy to get out of bed, not bother to shower, not do anything, 
and then just don't sit at your computer and by three o'clock you're still in your sleeping t-shirt um, and you haven't had a shower yet and you've just got totally involved and your day doesn't go so well. Get up and get dressed because even if you don't, nobody's going to see you, you're on your own all day, it makes a difference to the way you, um, you exist. Wear what makes you feel right. So if you need to do something that, um, you know, if, you need, if, you, if you're doing a business that needs a suit and tie, put a suit and tie on so that you feel the part as you, as you do it. Um, I don't really have suits and ties. So what I do is I have hats. Um, my day-to-day -day work, I don't have hats, but every now and again, I get involved with festivals. This is my festy hat, my current festy hat. My festy hat changes quite often. So when I'm working on festival stuff, um, I put my festy hat on because immediately I feel like a punter at a festival and I'm going to make sure that the, the, the service that I deliver at the festival is going to be better and more punter orientated and going to make sure that people have a better time because I'm feeling like a punter at, as I'm wearing my hat. So I do love the hat. That's my festy hat. And then occasionally I have the witch's hat because sometimes in especially starting out in a small business, you need a miracle. And that's what happens when you put the witch's hat on. <laughs> um, so yes, the importance of hats. I find them extremely useful part of my repertoire. And in the end, remember that it's only you. Nobody else is going to make your business happen. It's only going to be you. So yeah, get to it.